Good morning, beautiful saints. Welcome to church today. I would like to open with a scripture in the book of Isaiah 25 verse 1. It says, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. In perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. So this scripture is reminding us that the same plans that God had for us are still there. He doesn't have a plan B, but plan A is still going on. So be encouraged, brethren and sisters, and remember that his word remains the same. So with that being said, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for being a good God. We thank you for being a wonderful God. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, my dear Father, that your plans are still going on for our lives. And we know that your plans are good for us. And we know that your plans are to prosper us, not to harm us. We'd like to give you glory, my little Father, this morning as we're about to praise and worship you and as we're about to hear the word of the living God. Thank you, Lord, for everything in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody say, Amen.
Thank you so much to our praise and worship team for such a beautiful time in the presence of the Lord. Now, I will quickly go through the announcement. And the first announcement is on the 6th of September, we are opening church. And yes, we are sticking to 50 people. Now, we're going to have two services. The first service starts at 8 in the morning and the second one starts at 10 in the morning. So do join us as we reopen. It's going to be very, very, very awesome to spend time with you in the presence of the Lord once again. Now, every single Thursday at 6, we are having prayer on Zoom. Please do join us, saints, so that we can pray together. And every single day between 6 and 21 hours, we are also praying for the church. We are praying for you and we are praying for the whole country. Now, the other announcement is Doxa Kids is still on Zoom because they cannot be able to join us on our opening. So we'll still continue with our Zoom services. Please make sure they join us. We have a testimony, actually, where we were sharing our videos after we were done um, teaching the word of God and we have kids that are not even from Twani Central that are joining us. Now the word of God is still spreading so you see the wonders that the kids can do still on Zoom. So please make sure the kids do join us. Now the other announcement that I'd like to make is if you're celebrating your birthday happy, happy, happy birthday. May God continue to bless you with many more wonderful years and if there's any couple who are celebrating their anniversary would like to wish you a happy anniversary and we would like to pray that may God continue Continue to stay in your marriage and make it as beautiful as possible in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, we want to thank all our partners and anyone who has been giving towards the church. And please, saints, let us not forget to give into the house of the Lord so that the gospel can continue to spread. Now, yes, the announcements are done. Over to the moment we've all been waiting for. If you're joining us for the very first time, now, our pastor is called Mr. Kenneth Mowale, the dope pastor. That is what we call him here. Twenty Central. He's going to be sharing the word and his message is the meaning of time. Please saints do enjoy as Pastor Ken takes us through the word of God. Hello and uh, welcome to Dr. Deo Twenty Central Facebook and YouTube online service. So we are so thankful to the Lord that uh, for the past five months or so the Lord has uh, given us this opportunity to meet here on facebook but uh, starting this coming sunday on the 60th of september we are going back into our building and uh, we're going to start slowly just uh, with 50 people and uh, we're having two services at eight and at ten and uh, we pray that um, the lockdown you know is going to be eased as soon as possible so that we can have as many people into the building as possible because we know that uh, it's a frustration for many people you know because we can't fit everybody into the building so we will adhere to the government's uh, protocols of us keeping uh, safe you know social distancing and making sure that the building is safe and uh, we have sanitizers and all the important things in place in anticipation of your coming so we are looking forward we haven't seen you in a long time and uh we pray that the lord is going to just try to be like that scripture which says the children of israel were like uh, coming out of a dream or rather out of a sleep you know when they were set free you know to come and uh meet again in the building and just uh, be able to physically just uh, see one another. So this morning, I'm going to be discussing uh, the, the, the meaning of time. The meaning of time. You know, time is one of the most important things in our lives, but I can tell you not many people look at it that way. And I'm sure that after this uh, discussion today, you will look at time from a completely different perspective so i'm going to read from uh, ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 
it says he has made everything beautiful in his time also he has set eternity in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God makes from the beginning to the end so when you have more time without what to do with it many times you feel worthless why because time was not given to be filled with nothing so the more time you have that has nothing in it uh, a human being usually feels worthless and yet when you have a lot of things that you need to be done but you have very little time you feel frustrated you know you feel frustrated so if you have all these things you know like uh, uh, people you know those of us that are really really busy sometimes you have all these hundred and ten things that you want to be done within a very short space of time and then you realize that you don't have time again you become frustrated time only finds its meaning when it is allocated an activity and an activity finds its fulfillment within the right space of time because if there's too much time and there's no activities you become worthless and if there's very little time but too much stuff to do again you feel uh, frustrated so both time and activity can be frustrating when the two are not in good relationship so you need this relationship with time and activity for you to really feel fulfilled and for you to feel calm and for you to really feel that life is having meaning because the meaning of life is in time but time without life is really nothing you know so we have to, we are going to look at all these things today and i'm sure that uh, by the time we are going to be done with this discussion you will have learned uh, something so everything finds meaning when done within the right time and time finds meaning when something is done within it so i want us to look at the relationship between time and activity and activity and time because when these two things are not in sync or when these two things are not properly aligned i can tell you there is usually a lot of frustration and there's a lot of feeling as well of emptiness so let me go to uh, the bible and show you two scenarios of how time can either be frustrating or how time can actually be worthless depending on what you are doing with it or what you are not uh, doing with it so I am going to start with the frustration part of time it's in Genesis chapter 47 verse 7 to 10 the Bible says then Joseph brought his father Jacob in and presented him before Pharaoh after Jacob blessed Pharaoh Pharaoh asked him how old are you and Jacob said to Pharaoh the years of my pilgrimage are a hundred and thirty my years have been few and difficult and they do not equal the years of the pilgrimage of my forefathers then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from his presence why do you think Jacob living after living 130 years still feels that they were few and difficult why do you think jacob at 130 still want to live some more why do you feel why do we feel or rather hear a sense of regret in his speech to pharaoh the reason is very simple when Jacob comes into the presence of Pharaoh 130 years of his life are behind him but when he looks in in the future 
he has just discovered his son who was lost many many years ago he probably wants to live a little bit longer with his children uh, with his grandchildren that were born you know uh, outside Israel he starts to feel that his life could probably is just starting another phase and he would want that phase to continue he looks back and he sees a lot of things that are frustrating a lot of things that he, he regrets he thinks of his uncle Leban who changed his uh, wages 10 times he thinks of that marriage where he was uh, brought a woman that he wasn't uh, paying the lawola for he thinks of all these things he thinks of the day when his uh, firstborn son you know uh, went into his concubine and all those things are happening and then he realizes that here is me now in Egypt I have just found my son and my son is the prime minister of Egypt life could be great in this place you know life only has meaning or rather time only has meaning when the things that are happening within it really really means anything to you because if they don't time can be very frustrating and i can see jacob so jacob's frustration was that he had a lot that he wanted to do but he could feel that he was running out of time he is 130 years old but he can sense that something beautiful something great is just starting to happen and he would want to be part of this something great but he can sense that there isn't much time i don't know about you you know uh don't know what phase of your life you are at but my advice to you is that don't be like this man that one day when you are 80 years old and you look back and you're going to say 80 years have passed but these 80 years were few and yet there is another 30 year old that is having their hands in the air and they are saying man i've had a great ride in the past 30 years life was really really happening so it is up to you what do you feel your time with because time is nothing if the activities in it don't mean anything another frustration that i see from uh, uh, this man mr jacob is that he's 130 years old he's his 130 years life was full of a lot of regrets he is regretting a lot of things maybe there is that uh, you know business that he would have wanted to start that didn't get started maybe there is that venture that he had wanted to uh, get in you know and he didn't get in so watch out that those two things don't happen to you watch out that you are not frustrated because you are running out of time and watch out that you don't regret when your time seem to be running out and the only remedy to that is something that we are going to discuss right at the end of our discussion today the second thing is that we also it's not just the regrets in life that bring about frustration it's also not just when you're running out of time that you feel rushed but you know life itself when you have so much time and the activities within it don't make any sense it can actually become very very frustrating so ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 3 the bible says a man may have a hundred children and live many years yet no matter how long he lives if he cannot enjoy his prosperity and does not receive proper burial i say that a still born child 
is better off than he. So the Bible says that if you live a hundred years, but your life, your hundred years were worthless, you were just doing funny things, you know, um, it doesn't even matter. You know, the Bible says that actually, if you were born dead, it would have been better because actually it's almost the same thing even if you spend 100 years but this 100 years didn't mean anything then if you were born dead it would have even been better because then you wouldn't even have gone through all the 100 years doing nothing that is the bible it's not me so you can see in the book of ecclesiastes where we see this man who has lived 100 years and has fathered many children but the bible says because his life was worthless he didn't have a proper burial and you know uh when the bible says he didn't have a proper burial it doesn't mean the actual burial it is a figure of speech meaning that his reputation was really nothing because most of the times a funeral uh, reveals to us the reputation of somebody. You know, when you have this huge funeral because everybody wants to see who is this person who has died. And they, 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 they say, for example, that a president has died. You see, everybody wants to be part of that funeral. Do you know why? Because the life of that person meant a lot. You know, so when they say his funeral, is nothing it means that his life was nothing so this man had more time but did very little with the time that was allocated to him you know we need to watch against the idea that life is measured by its length you know life is not measured by its length life is measured by the activities that we do within the time that is allocated to us that is why you know somebody says that there are people that die at 25 but they get buried at 75. now all the 50 years cannot be accounted for why because they did nothing in those 50 years and if you look at somebody somebody's life and if you were to really get the time that they lived in the time that they had here on earth you are going to discover that there is very very little amount of life that they lived here on earth my prayer is that your life will not be measured by the time that you're going to live here on earth but that your life will be measured by the things that you will do with your time so life is measured by what you do with the time that you have been given I hope and I pray that you will not take time for granted, but that you will use time to make sure that if you live eight years, for sure, the eight years were worth it. You know, as I close today, I just want to read a passage of scripture in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verse 15. The Bible says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the lord is the solution to the problem or the dilemma of time is found in that passage of scripture that we read redeem the time to redeem the time means you have to make sure that you make use of the time that has been allocated to you make sure that you do what is supposed to be done when it is supposed to be done not to push things to the future or to do more today than you were supposed to do you know do not leave what is supposed to be done today for tomorrow and don't do things for tomorrow today manage your time by allocating the appropriate activities
to it. If you do that, you are going to live a very fulfilled life. Because why? You are going to, uh, your time is not going to be wasted. And you won't have frustrations and you won't have regrets. Why? Because when you get to the end of your life, you will know that I used the life that was given to me uh, the way it was supposed to be. So my prayer today is that you will not take time for granted and that you will not do things that are supposed to be done in certain allocated times within the wrong times. Why? Because the Bible says everything is beautiful when it is done within the time that it is allocated or the time that it is supposed to be done. So may God bless you. We will meet now on Sunday in the building. God bless you. Yes, I said it and I will say it again. Our dopest pastor is always dropping bombs on us. Saints, we need to be ready because on the 6th is he's even going to be on fire. Yeah. So thank you very much, Pastor, for the word. We really enjoy it. And guys, let's not forget to pray for Pastor Ken and his family so that God can give him the strength because he's our pastor, man. We need to shield him with our prayers. So Pastor Ken, we are praying for you and we are also praying for your family. And one more announcement, please. The very important one is that we are opening church don't forget saints and dr kids is still meeting on zoom so saints you do have yourself a lovely week and remember that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of our lives in jesus name enjoy your day